This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of SM Media Road to Cheltenham 2024. I'm Scott McPike, it's a pleasure as always to be your host and I'm delighted as always to be joined by from the Scottish Daily Mail, Callum McClurkin. Callum, it's looking very bleak, it's looking very frosty and rubbish here but it's not looking good for the weekend racing. Yeah, hello there, it seems to be the case everywhere. Um, I think everyone's been um, on weather watch rather than you know, horse form watch um, and it, it, it doesn't it doesn't look good for asking he don't particularly on Saturday um been in this boat many a times that that'd be like the sixteenth. I'll be up to sixteen meetings called off already this year. Yeah. Um and you know the lack of scope for the BHA to rearrange not just certain races but, but whole meetings is it's a bit disappointing. We are going to preview the races with the assumption that they're on. We'll probably get word that they're going to be called off before we put this video out. But we're going to go with the assumption that the racing's on and we're going to do previews on the races. But we did have some fan questions that came in. Obviously, this one was, was making the rounds all week and it's, a, it's an interesting one, Callum. What is your all-time cliff horse? Well, I was thinking about this and I'm not really sure that I have one... Significantly in the jumps, maybe like maybe a Yuchello Conti kind of figure where you'd go back to him, grab the Grand National, and you'd keep placing all the time, and you'd be each way in kind of you know big handicaps. I would kind of I would kind of back that horse quite regularly, and maybe maybe keep kind of backing him a little when he's a little bit too high in grade. Um, as for others, it's mainly sprint handicaps in the flat that you get kind of fooled by these things. Um, so, um, Summerhand would be my would probably be my biggest one. Um, every time I get, you know, maybe not, maybe not a cliff horse, maybe like a, a trolling horse. Every time I back him, I get him wrong, and every time I don't, he wins. Um, whether that's an Air Goodwood, you know, uh, New Market, every every single time that happened. Um, that Firmament was a horse back in the day that I always backed at York. Um, it, some of them, sometimes he won quite well, sometimes he didn't. Um, Horses like that. Went with Fogs was another on the flat. Um, wasn't a lot of jumps once. Um, I was trying to look back and think about it. In the last the last two or three years, the way I've been betting, there, there hasn't been many that have that fall off, off, fallen off a cliff with. There's been quite a few that have gave up two or three times and not going in early enough, and, and, and then it has subsequently won. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at savouring ties and, and maybe not being too overly faithful uh, sometimes. Follow Dan the company too long for a season <laughs> after Coral, a Coral Cup win, but that was kind of out of uh, loyalty rather than anything. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't necessarily have cliff horses, but th I think that'd be more, more to the flat because I think they can fool you a little bit easier. Yeah, the one kind of jump loss that comes to mind and you've moaned me for this is the the big breakaway. I've backed him way too many times for my own good and I thought this was going to be superb. Chase and it just didn't work out for him. The flat there's a flat horse that comes to mind immediately, and I've got quite a funny story about this. Uh, this would be about ten years ago. There was I I was still at school actually, so that shows you how long ago it was. And there was a flat meeting on it here in September. There was a lovely sunny day, and I had an afternoon off. I had no no subjects or anything like that. I did an afternoon off. My dad was off a half day as well, and he texted me saying, "Do you want to meet me at a race course?" And we'll go. The races for the afternoon, I was like, yep, absolutely. And there was a Goldie horse running, and it finished third by the name of Jack Dexter. That rang a bell? Yes, right. definitely, yeah. The horse that won, and I, I remember this very specifically, the two main memories I've got of this race is Ocean Murphy won on an Andrew Balding horse, and he was a claimant at the time. Highland and, Glory. That's right. And my dad said, follow that jockey. And for then, he's always kind of seemed to follow Ocean Murphy. But it was a horse running in six that race as well. Do you remember back it up for uh, Godolphin? Yes. The yeah, one, I, the one I really liked before Godolphin when we went to Omera in the, in the uh, pink and purple. He finished yeah. six in that race. I can't remember who rode him that day, but he went on to win at Royal Ascot. I think he went on to have a, a really good time at Maidan and things like that as well. But Jack Dexter finished third and he looked he looked like he needed that he was he needed that run and he went on to a brilliant servant for Jim Goldie and I backed him every single race he run 
maybe yeah. to my detriment, but he come up with some good good ones as well these days. Yeah, I think that happens in the flat, particularly handicaps like that. I mean, they always, always horses are always going to shape well. You do note down and follow, and I think they, they run more in a season, so they, they tend to be more of your cliff horses, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that was thing. Yeah, that was that was the day that I think Ocean Murphy was a claimer, no the five time on their Gold Cup day. That's right. Yeah. The, the rest, the rest, the rest was history uh, at a really young age. So. Um, yeah, no, that, that that's a, that's probably one of the more memorable Air Gold Cup means as well, as well for me. Um, yeah, I think you can bring in all all these kind of old handicappers that you that you remember because they kind of they can go on to like age seven, eight, nine, and and, and be around since like you know, two, three, four year old days. Uh, in my late uh, Chucky Dunedin was still running at the age of like ten and eleven last season. He 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 ran a Windsor Castle at Ascot at like age two or something like that. It was it was one of the one of the fancy races there. So I mean. They can they can go about uh, at this level for seven seven eight years and run to about a hundred times um, and maybe you've backed them ten times you backed them twenty times that would feel like a cliff horse to me so I think I think you're more inclined to the cliff horse in the flat than over jumps. Next question, Callum: Are we potentially overlooking Mark Walsh to be top jockey due to the firepower of JP McManus? This is a very interesting question. Actually, I've not thought about this. Um, possibly, yeah. Um, be maybe a bit more interesting if in the pocket was was fit in uh, Indiana Dream and, and, and some horses like that. Um, he is first in the line, GP McManus. I think the handicaps might bring him into equation because he's going to get first dibs in the kind of Irish handicappers from there. But um, yeah, over in Britain, they'll have their own kind of stable jockeys that will ride for GP McManus. Over in Ireland, we've seen Rachel Blackmore kind of ride. Um, you do wonder is he is he going to actually necessarily be on the GP number one on certain races? Mm-hmm. Um, he certainly does have a strong book. Um, he'll definitely have a strong chance. You could see him easily getting three or four. I, I would I would think you know, over the line he definitely have three or four kind of that will be favourite second favourite chances. If he gets the handicaps right, then he's definitely in the equation. A bit like a strong Barry Garrett a year where everything just seemed to go right from yeah. uh, winning a couple of graded races and and you know being the kind of the main man to beat in the handicap. So yeah, you'd have to see Paul Townend as an obvious favourite because you'd rather be having you know being Willie Mullins as number one than maybe you'd rather be the top trainer's number one than, than possibly being the top owner number one. The owner is missing a couple that would have you know strengthened his case. Um and there are other trainers that will use different jockeys regardless of him being number one. So it's a little bit up in the air, but if, if, if he gets it right and, and, and the bookings look good and, and he maintains this form, go into March and then he's, he's, he's certainly entering the equation. Yeah, I think he's got a big chance as well. It's obviously it all depends on what he gets right and things like that, as you say. And I think it's maybe different now to what it was maybe in the kind of Garrity McCoy days where they were on the number one no matter what. You do have a bit of a, like, for example, I would be very surprised if De Boingville doesn't ride John Bond, for example. Mark Walsh isn't going to ride him. Coleman's probably in line if he gets back before. So it is different to the days. But I, I still wouldn't overlook him because he's riding superbly and there's a lot of Irish chances, I think, particularly in handicaps, which which I'll we'll get on to probably later on in the series. Next question, who is the biggest threat to Gallop in the Champs and the Gold Cup? Oh, good question. Um, maybe himself. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. And on form, you'd have to say fast or slow is natural. The one because he'd beat him twice, okay, off color, but you know he's the one that's kind of fresh. Um, and it's it's easier to see him beating him than maybe Jerry Colomb, although he maybe didn't quite see out his race as he should have on the wrong part of the track at Leopardstown, which a place he hadn't been before. Um, Cheltenham. It's, the stiffer test should suit him, but that shouldn't be a problem to Gallop and Deschamps. You know, I mean, on the flip side, you know, you could make arguments, you know, left, right, and centre for, for for other horses. But I mean, you you then go back and say, well, can they real realistically beat an informed Gallop and Deschamps? Probably not. Um, the market's probably correct in, in your marking fast or slow. Um, well, home press and gentlemen's game are different opponents potentially. If they if they get their fit, fit and well, they they might have a chance. Um, but they might be the two value ones against them because they haven't really seen what they can do uh, against them really. Um, yeah, I just think that's 
the, the main way that I would be looking at it if you if you think that he's a little bit vulnerable is that he's too short in the nature of that race because a lot can go wrong, a lot could happen. You know, if they hold him up again last time, you know, he could be brought down. Um, never want to see it, but you know, when there's when the distance is longer and there's more fences, there's a lot more peril, and um, a lot, it's a lot more likely for things to, to potentially go wrong. So, um, but I think he's more versatile than that. I think they, they can ride, ride him more forward, like they did in Leopardstown. They showed a different showed a different kind of arm, so I have a different kind of string to his bow in that regard. So, um, yeah, I, I think on paper it's definitely fast or slow. In terms of potential, I wouldn't write off Jerry Colomb. Um, the rest seem to be playing for snookers a little bit, with maybe gentlemen's game, gentlemen's game in the home press, the most interesting of them. But um, yeah, it's it's hard to see him getting beat. But again, at the price of the odds this far out, and it's hard to kind of really get involved. What do we think? I, I'm lo- I'm just looking at prices just now, and I see twenty to one Brave Man's game. Now I don't think Brave Man's game can beat Gallop and Deschamps, but surely the fact that he's in three hard races, they're going to give him a break now between now and Cheltenham. I think twenty to one looks big, considering if if he runs to last year, if he runs to the form of last year, he's definitely going to be an each way player. Yeah, I mean, you could realistically say one two again. If Paul Nichols last week, I, I I think I read somewhere did float the idea of running him the Denman Chase. Um, mm. So, and maybe they've kind of waved the right flag a little bit in, in terms of this season. We might as well just run them now and, and see what happens and hopefully get a win into this season because I, I think they know where he's at. He's, 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 he can hit a 170 performance on his day. Um, at Kempton, he's shaped a bit more like a Gold Cup horse mm-hmm. than we'd usually see. Um, he boxed on fairly well, but you look at the form of that race and, and, and think, is that you know, is that strong as you know what what Gallop and Deschamps even did over Christmas and, and yeah. what what even the the field in behind Gallop and Deschamps did at Christmas? So yeah, he's back to kind of the sixteen twenty to one mark where he was pre season, and that that seems about fair. Final question: We just get this news before we started recording. Uh, the former Gold Cup winner Apple Tard has been retired by Chibley Park. Callum, what is your favourite Apple Tard memory? It has to be spectacular victory, isn't it? When he picked up Middlelindo from running the absolute went whoosh, and it was a really big RPR when he won that Gold Cup. Um, for me, though, when he burst on it, seems was, was in the same season when Betfair Chase, where he yeah. absolutely blitzed them. You know, thinking like oh, he's, he's you know taking horses like Bristle de Mayo in their, their own patch, and okay, they, they might be pretty exposed, but I mean they were very kind of you know proven Haydock specific horses that are. You know, hard to beat that would have been their Gold Cup start season, and he stamped his class on it and annihilated them like a really, really good horse. And um, yeah, and that was a kind of he was, you know, I think he would have got maybe a bit more credit if Honeysuckle wasn't around the unbeaten run and stuff like that, and because he, he put up some absolutely mighty performances in his time, and then um, it's, it's good to see him get out at the right time because uh, he did look a shadow of himself over yeah. Christmas. Yeah, I think obviously that Gold Cup win, obviously not from a personal point of view as well, it was a, it was a really good day that day. So um, mm-hmm. he was probably the big winner. So that was that one as well. It, it burst on the scene in the, obviously the former race known as the Coast Brothers and it and looked really good in that as well. And that produced a good, that was a good race as well. Produced obviously Galvin came out of that and, and then the year after beat Shaq and Persuade over two miles. So he was, he done a lot of different, Kind of, kind of different disciplines as well. One at two miles, one at th- uh, over three two, and one obviously an Irish Gold Cup. So, really, really good horse in his day, and obviously, as you say, getting out at the right time. So, good luck to Applutard and his future. Let's move on to a far busier than last week recap. Folks, we're starting Friday at Nace with the rescheduled Lawlers of Nace meeting. First of all, we saw Calixios win at Novice's Chase over two miles, beat Safarur. Mr. Policeman was in there as well. Very informative race, Callum. Calixios, I thought, jumped really well. Could be an each way player in an Arco and another example of Henry de Bromhead's horses improving for fences. Could well be. Um, this was all about the favourite disappointing. You know, the, the thing was. Strong the race, he's he's just not Arkel material. He he seems to be a hype horse. He, he seems to be him, like, Jinky could definitely. Jinky could maybe go on and win like a 
handicap or something? No, I think so. No, uh, no, I mean, maybe handicap, but a uh, strongly run handicap. But I mean, it's, he, doesn't, he doesn't jump well enough. Um, he's 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 one of these classic types where he's working the house down and doesn't produce it on track. To me, um, it's simple as that. There's there's stuff in the form book suggesting that he's he's remotely interested in, in anything really. In, in my opinion, maybe a strongly run race. And, and a handicap company might bring different light. I mean, we've seen it, we've seen it time and time again. Really, it would be, it would be, it wouldn't be surprising. But you know, as as a horse, it's been touted as ten to one Arkham chance. I mean, he's he's, he's absolutely miles away. Mm-hmm. I mean, miles away. Uh, Colixios, he jumps solely well. Arkham seems to be touted. He's, he's won a triumph. Um, <clears throat> again, it's just you know when you see it, an odds-on favourite, you know, run like that. Um, you have to take the form with a massive pinch of salt in relation to, to any spring festival grade one. So um, I'd like to see him, don't know whether he'll go straight there. It's probably a soft enough programme that he can get one more race into him. Uh, it's what Henry de Bromer likes to do, try and try and get as much experience as he can. Um, do you fling him in a DRF? I don't know if he comes out of it well, and you would, because if, if he's a triumph winner, um, you know, he should have quite a lot, quite good resolution for racing. So it's, Good to see him get back on track. I mean, I think I think he's a type of horse that you might as well try and strike when the island's hot with, and um, because he you might you might tail off it at some point. He might be a spring horse that just comes to life at this time of year, and um, it's just a very hard race to weigh up. Um, I would treat it with a lot of caution. Yeah, I thought the second shape pretty well, Safaru. I think he could be one if they they get a good mark into him. He could be one for for possibly a grand annual or something like that. I'd keep an eye on him. Uh, we'll move on to the Lawless of Nace. Very interesting race again. Follow the name of the winner. Suggest that we did read this race wrong. Uh, reading Tommy wrong one beat Al Atlantique. A, a lot to get into here. I I think. What do we think of the winner? Just, I I thought the the best jockey, the best ride won the race, and I think maybe going up to a Bartlett, reading Tommy wrong could be a player. There was late money for him around, um, and certainly knew what they had. And he's he's he's, he's come late in one, um, and he, he's you know I take Bart back quite well. Um, you would think Bartlett after seeing that, um, but connections were pretty keen to stick Ballymore route with him. Um, you know, Daryl Jacobs said, "We'll, we'll obviously wait and see what what, what they do." But um, Willie Mullins was quite adamant about. Two and a half miles still, um, and then he finished off quite well. And he's he's, he's really inexperienced, so he, he's he's most likely to improve out of it. I would say, um, El Atlantic, bit unlucky. Um, you know, he he was the one that kind of he saw Firefox quite readily from the front, and he's just been maybe mugged a little bit late, and he did try and rally. Um, I wouldn't say he's he's, he's soft in a finish, but you know he does have three seconds in a row. Uh, all of them, well, well, three seconds in between his main um, main victory, of course, which was which was very bloodless. Um, that that not a lot of kind of festival hurdle winners come in, beat and 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 win in in a, in, a, in what would probably be a better race. Um, so I, I'd be I'd be a bit mindful of him and, and and about his trip. Maybe Firefox could drop back. He obviously he jumped, didn't run his race. He jumped really well. I thought I thought he was travelling the best up until a, a certain point. He just seemed to go out like a light. Sometimes that's stamina wise. Sometimes some it's quite a few gone Alex actually didn't really finish yeah, off the race that week. Um, so maybe the rescheduling of it kind of slightly threw them more than the Mullins camp because they didn't quite have the depth for it. And maybe Firefox was a bit more earmarked for that earmarked for that specific day. But um, four or five day difference shouldn't make too much of a. I think so you just you know you do also have that niggling doubt of going is this the time where Willie Mullins' battalion of horses start to overtake in the Gordon Elliott uh, battalion have they shown their hand a bit too soon and all of a sudden you know even these kind of you know Willie Mullins sleepers like Noreen Tommy Wrong are, are, are coming and winning grade ones all of a sudden and preparing themselves into the picture so yeah for uh, for a race beforehand they thought there'd be kind of significant kind of bearings in Cheltenham Festival it probably shrouded it in and a bit more doubt because I, I didn't think it was, didn't think it was that fantastic of a renewal to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, it wouldn't surprise me if none of them won at Chill. Yeah, I kind of tend to agree. I, I just think I, I thought Firefox. I, I thought two out Firefox was going to win, and they just seemed to go out. Gordon Elliott's running at nine percent just now. Is that a concern? It's not in terms of 
win because he runs so many horses. It's 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 not really that. You know, he's he's going to get the odd winner here there regardless. I mean, he does run like these low grade races probably you know get a good three four five. So uh, that that kind of skews the numbers. Um, it's maybe run run percentage to form would be kind of a, a better statistic than than winners with with him. Um, but I, you can only really go in your eyes and on that kind of thing unless you do really crunch numbers. But there has been a little bit of a tailing off, I think, the last couple of weeks, slightly. Um, maybe it's jab season as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe getting them ready for Dublin Racing Festival in, 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 in Cheltenham in February, March. You know, that's when you want them to peak, maybe not now. So maybe they've kind of uh, tweaked it a little bit. Um, the only thing prehand that I could confidently predict in that race was Anne Tubble's performance, mm-hmm. uh, which duly uh, happened. Um, I mean, he just finds... Next to next to nothing for me. Uh, I was really disappointed. Croke Park didn't see it. Out. I thought he gave him an easy time. Um, in 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 Chapel du Soleil, couldn't, couldn't couldn't really jump well enough either. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, another interesting aspect of the Novice Earl Division is that you know a lot of Willie Mullins is are good, but then the, the jumping is is isn't. I mean, it's it, it's ropey. Um, some of them, you know, quite a lot of them actually, I would say. Um, but. But yeah, it's, you couldn't argue with it. You could give the third another chance if you're inclined to think that that wasn't his true running. Um, you'd have to think that they might go back to the Supreme route. But, you know, Elliot's got Far and Glory and Colwell Potter maybe for that. And maybe I don't I don't see him running three in a Supreme. No. I think he'd have to kind of split them up a little bit. Um, and, what, you know, what William Williams does... You wouldn't you wouldn't like to know. So I think that's maybe why quite a few people went going. I'm not overly impressed by this. I'll take a chance in some of the English novices at the moment. Yeah, we'll move into Tully Hill. Obviously, getting off the mark over hurdles. Uh, the race after that, again, you can argue is he beat. He's not beaten much here at all. I don't think this form will hold up. But it was better than what we've seen, and I think we can safely assume that he's not going to be running over two miles six anytime soon. It's an improvement back in trip, you know, two to nine. Again, his jumping has to improve yeah. for, for grade ones. I mean, it's I mean, the first time out is as if he never schooled before. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, and you've gone from you know F to C minus really with with, with, with his jumping. Uh, it's, it's 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 not good, and you know, just just on that alone, you, you wouldn't. I mean, we can go near him for, for a grade no. one, in, in my opinion. Maybe these horses could all of a sudden get better light and better races and they, they become what what people think they are at the start of the season. But um, they're taking a hell of a chance at the moment. You'd, you'd rather kind of wait and see them do it in, 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 in better comfort. We'll move on to Warwick on Saturday. Uh, we saw a very, very informative performance by Grey Dawning, now into 7-1 to for the Brown Advisory. Won the Hampton the 14 lengths, beat a good field. Apple away, Broadway boy were in there. <laughs> Callum, what do we think of this? It, obviously, it was a really good day for the Skeltons, but and he's done it well, and he's obviously got serious, see, he's got a serious, serious performance in him, but that jumping, it, particularly the kind of last two, you would think, hmm, at Cheltenham, that wouldn't, that wouldn't stand. He's just alone, isn't he? And he's 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 logging in for for maybe a bit of company. I, I do really like the horse. Uh, I, I've liked him for some time. I, I quite liked him at Aintree where he where he was, you know, tanking along in the race. Apple away won the Grand Seft, and he was, you know, you know, you know, breezing along midfield, and, and then made it made you know kind of a mistake out of nowhere. So he's a bit kind of raw, um, and and maybe that race. On Saturday, set up for him because Apple away taking on Broadway Boy from the front who couldn't lead. And you said, you know, hard race after hard race this season. And maybe that was a, a bridge too far for him in, in Apple away, shaping as if National Hunt chase horse to me that stays all day long. Um, and probably did well to actually box on to be on 13 14 lengths. But th- this horse is a bit of class grade on him. Um, the thing that worries me about him is I don't think he's a Cheltenham horse. I, th- I, th- I would I would keep him to flat track. I mean, I I think Aintree, the three miler, he would absolutely adore. Um, he made two massive mistakes at Cheltenham when he got beat, and he still should have won, which does does show that he is a serious serious bit of class about him. And, and Paul Nichols has put Jenny's Nessie in the same races as mm. as Dan Skelton has, and he would beat him senseless, uh, you know, and. With with and also with a better ride, yeah, he, he probably still would have won as well that day. Um, he has bundles of talent, and um, I would put him in a my Drogo 
category is a very good skeleton novice chaser rather than kind of a Shan Blue that might flap to deceive a little bit towards the end. Uh, and you would need to get the race right. We, we like Shan Blue. You won at Kempton, for instance, and Chelton didn't it didn't quite go to plan, and and they were all a bit too far. But you know, he, he doesn't need to be kind of ridden aggressively either, which might help Harry Skelton a little bit. He can be timed uh, correctly. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I wouldn't rule him out. We'll move on to Kempton. A few horses to talk about. We'll start with uh, looks at an exciting juvenile. I think a horse for the future for Paul Nichols and Khalif de Berley. Uh, there was already vibes coming out that they, they don't see this as the, the be-all and end-all. They think he might even be a Gold Cup horse in time. I think that's a good horse for the future. Yeah, and just keep in mind of him. Him and Liari, I think, are two yeah. Nichols horses that are quite good. Um, and it would be nice if one of them came up to to Muscle, but probably Liari, yeah. maybe, uh, for over DRF week and because you like to get trial in there. So, um, yeah, I think, I think those kind of like spring races maybe away from Cheltenham Will, will suit because that's what he kind of likes to do when he thinks that there's a serious future prospect there and he, he looks to be one. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the handicap chase was won by Phlegmatic and again, another good day for Dan Skelton, particularly in these handicaps. Beat Shanti Classico. I love Shanti Classico's profile for the ultimate now. Like, I, I, did, I did even before this race. I just think now, race wide, kept on, I think this is an ultimate horse. I think he's the entry equivalent of an Ultima horse. It's, and Kim Bailey is, is maybe thinking along the same lines because he did come out in the week and say that he's not quite sure about the Cheltenham track for him and he might wait for entry. Um, that was my reading of it. Um, th- there are other horses in there as well that, that will be Ultima, Ultima bound at this stage. So it's it's a race that I really had a big look at and, and almost get involved in, but there was a couple in the weekend that, may or may not run, it may not may not happen and you have to wait, uh, I would have to say, because that would have been quite informative. Um as for the I mean the, the winner phlegmatic, you know, he's he, who, you know, I managed to manage to back along the grey dawning because uh, you know, the skeletons kind of map out Lanzaroy meeting really, really well. Uh, he's a specialist right handed. Uh, loves Ascot, loves Kempton, you know, absolutely loves the challenge like that. Um and, and, and Tristan Durrell is 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 definitely he's definitely a conditional to watch. He is improving yeah. all the time. Um, he's phlegmatic, you know, the cheek pieces. He's he can be quite a, a quirky customer. And the spirit of the games and the old kind of um, same colours and it's that that kind of thing where he, he needs to be dropped right. But he's aggressive and front foot, and it, it wasn't it wasn't really in doubt um, for me. And that was a kind of nervous backer taking four to one on a horse that you know can possibly duck it, but. He was, he was laid out for the best for that handicap and he's, and he's duly won. So, um, yeah, places like Ascot, Kempton, that, that's, where he, that's where you follow with him. Yep, serious performance at Kempton by Banbridge. Obviously a good one for you if you're anti-post book. Now into 5-1 to one for the Ryanair. What did you think of it? It was, again, beat the right horses, picked Dory, but real shame, obviously, but not long to me for, for Laura Morgan. I thought that interview was really harrowing. But in terms of Banbridge, how do you feel now after that? Well, good price wise. Um, I mean, that was just a private kind of bit. But I mean, that that was pre season, so I mean, it's fourteen twenties, sixteen, you know, around there. And um, you can't get involved in fives because he is ground dependent whether he's going to yeah. run or not. And um, it's it's absolutely so. Even though he's even though he, there was that niggling doubt of can he's got to kind of make the grade and to do that and reappearance and beat Pick Dory, which was a very much a home game for him. And mm-hmm. um, you know, picked him off quite quite readily, and he's just a very likeable solid horse that, that just does enough and um, he, he doesn't look flashing what he does but he, he doesn't look in, in much danger with, in doing it and um, his jumping is is pretty much rock solid um, and you know connections have been rewarded for being patient with him knowing exactly what he is exactly what to target and when the ground's right we'll go and when it's not we won't uh, regardless of the race um, so yeah I mean and I, th- and I think there was a lot of reservations about how suitable Kempton would be for him, you know, because he is kind of more of a kind of solid, you'd appreciate a kind of more galloping track. Um, he hung on there, kept in tabs with the winner and he jumped better than the last and and, and that's what that's what clinched it. Um, Pick Dory's he's a solid, he's only a solid 160 grade two operator in, 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 in tracks like that and he, he probably ran ran up to that, uh, maybe, not, maybe not far off it, maybe, maybe high 150s at least. So he has taken a step up and, um, 
he has improved into open company um, and there's probably a bit more to come and he's the up and coming Springer in this race that I think a lot of people highlighted but a lot of people maybe had doubts about oh, well are they going to get him out in times I think he had a massive drift because he wasn't out but that was ground related and, and, and things like that so why have we not seen this horse people were suddenly going and, and the bookmakers went oh you're right we'll push him out and that, that wasn't too clever either but he's, he's at a price now where he you can't entertain because of that ground query. So uh, you just have to believe, fingers crossed, at the ground that it all goes to plan and, and the weather gods play their part, which um, so far, <laughs> if anything, if today and this weekend's to go by, you would not be holding out hope. You wouldn't be, you'd be taking five to one of them. I mean, the majority of that price is factored in as, as, as whether I'd run, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, think now he's, I think now he's the one to beat. But, and... It's very sad with Laura Morgan, you know, when small stable like that, you know, lose a kind of really main star that that, that was going places is is it's very hard. It just makes it even harder to take. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll move into the the Lanzarote. JJ Riley, another Dan Skelton handicap winner, one at thirty three to one. I want to have a wee rant about a certain horse in this race, but I'll, we'll talk about the winner first. JJ Riley, what do we think here? What do, what do we think? Are there, is there any informative clues potentially for a Coral Cup or anything like that? The kids, a good young conditional jockey. I would go Martin Pike with him. Yeah, um, it's that simple to me. Um, but he came to, sometimes translating Kempton form into Chelton is, is is definitely quite tricky. Um, so, but he, he breezed into it one quite well. He was missed by everyone in the market. It's annoying because the trainers got a really good wreck on the race, and you could you, you could maybe backed and blind a little bit at thirty threes. But you know they, they shelved the kind of novice chasing season, went back hurdling, and it's. And it's worked, you know. And is there more to come with that yard, you know, target? And he's he's definitely worth a second look, and, and potentially a Martin Pipe. He's maybe an eight year old, might be maybe a bit too much for him. But you no know, old horses have done okay in that in the past. Um, I think it's because it's, it's got conditional status, and they think it maybe goes to young progressive horses all the time. When it's it's actually young progressive jockeys that you probably have to look out for more. Um, um, he was given a very confident ride, wasn't he? He wasn't ridden as if he was a kind of thirty-three to one no hoper. He was been was a nice, cool, big chance. So I suspect they knew what they were doing there, big style. There's a horse running in this race, obviously. Well, we've, we've spoke about it before, Callum Langer. Langer Dan was running in this race, finished I think eleventh. Langer Dan obviously won last year's Col- uh, Coral Cup, right? These are his four runs since then: sixth of seventh, beating forty-nine lengths. Then uh, ran just before Christmas, uh, get pulled up, and then the week after run ninth of eleventh where he was beaten twenty seven lengths, and thirteenth of January so Saturday was fourteenth of nineteenth beaten thirty one lengths and bled, and folk are backing him at seven to one for the Coral Cup. What does that tell you? What that that to me is mind blown. It's 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 kind of predictable route, isn't it? I mean, you, you wouldn't back horses that bled. You can maybe see, you can maybe see the kind of he's not off all season back to the old kind of plot, and and, and that's it. Um, he's, he's, but you know, you have to take some form of face value, and the fact that he's he's bled would would definitely put me off uh, at all. I mean, the, the campaigning of it, it 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 makes a mockery of the. Of, of the sport really yeah um, it does how blatantly obvious it is and you know the handicapper you have to put horses back given what they're showing because you know sometimes it might be legitimate so it's not as if he's going to be well in for a coral cup you know he's he's he's, he's going to be on that mark if, if he goes at all and they believe it's a, it's a legitimate excuse you know they find it you know you can't they can't they can't fake that um so yeah um but He's, he's kind of he's, it's a problem now with handicap man. he's the obvious one so everyone kind of backs him and then thinking oh actually then you look at the form book and he, and he goes out to 14, 16, 20s probably and then you're, then you're relying on the day that well this horse is actually back and you'd want to see a bit of blue about him and you don't um, and then he, if you don't then he, he could easily go out 28, 33s so he can also easily be a no, a no show if he's if, he, if he's played from the nose so um yeah, I mean, just because it's it's pretty dark times if you've got to prolong a plot to go back for a handicap. Yeah, the season I'm, after, I, I I I would think, and I think you'd have to, I think you'd have to kind of think about it like like that. You know, by Christmas time, you wouldn't want to be you wouldn't want to be seeing that all season. No, 
No, we'll move into Weatherby. Colin O'Hare won the, the Toy Town, obviously the grade two that, that day. Uh, probably more of the story was actually what happened at the start of the race, if you've seen them, you've seen the way he was mounted. But what do we think? Again, probably not a Cheltenham graded operator, but he's he's going to win these grade twos when the British division is really poor. And he might be a handicapped player. Well, I mean, the winning thing is you know, if you're winning these grade two, even grade ones, yeah, uh, you can't really go into the handicap company. Uh, just take your chance in an article and see what see what happens and see where you're at and and, and take it take the open season by there. And even entry might fall in your lap. I mean, Miller, Miller's Bank won you know, grade one races and things like that. I mean, if if it's weak, then all all he can do is take advantage of it. And he, he's doing it well. He won that. You know, he's he, he breezed into it. You know. He was weak. He was actually weak in the market. Um, he went off odds again. So it's, it's, it's unbelievable t- to me. You know, I mean, he, Miles is the best form in the book. Okay, it's weak grade one form, but it's, it's grade one form. You know, it's it's a four-runner race against you know, against weak opponents. Breezed into it. Gavin Sheen held held on to him long enough for him to see it out better. And, and, and he's won. It's a poor race for the grade, but, you know, it's a poor division for the grade. And he, he's the best at the moment, so fair play him. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move into Fairy House. A few to mention. We'll start with uh, the Memorial Handicap. The Grade Three was won by Uncle Phil. Really good jumping performance. Again, this this race I think could be quite informative. Come Cheltenham. What are your takeaways from this race? The winner jumped them silly, really. Yeah. Uh, I I thought I mean, if it wasn't Willie Mullins kind of trying to find his number one Arco horse, this guy would win. Guy win the picture jumping wise. Anyway, I was yeah. thinking. I mean, yeah, I I I. I, I Personally, I just thought that the winner was 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 the main was the main one to follow there. I mean, there might be might be handicap kind of blocks down the line, and but with racing off probably next week, I think you can have more time to really kind of dissect the horses in behind for the future, uh, and you'd probably start getting entries for DRF for handicaps as well, and that's where you find out if they're going up and down and trip. And, and, and things like that, I think you'll learn a hell of a lot more in regards to what's in behind if you just go back a bit and, and dig a little bit deeper next week you might get better better prices and better pointers because um, I think they'll have the time to do it um, I thought the winner wouldn't be that far out of Arco class um, but because he's Willie Mullins it might be unlikely and it's another kind of valuable fairy house beaten just before then and then subsequently on Irish Grand National Day, um, he might be one that they keep there to win those kind of prizes. What do we think of the horse that finished fourth, San Juan? Well, I, I, I like him for a plate. I mean, I don't like the, the Grand Annual thing, but you know, he did come on quite quickly. He's, he's been in my radar for quite a while. Um, I think he's been crying up for a trip all season, and I think he's been laid out for the two and a half mile handicap route. I think he's a kind of he's GP McManus is Andy Dufresne, I think, off one five five, probably with Irish tax involved. Um he'll probably run again. They might try and get him down to one fifty. I think he's one five one right now. If you know, one four 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 nine, one fifty. I think he'll run off handicap off one five five. But he, he was in one of those brackets where like, you know, Phil Dora going, Well, are these horses gonna take a chance in an open Ryanair or are they gonna you know, keep maybe holding them back a little bit for kind of be kind of big weight and a handicap. Um, I would love to see him go up two and a half miles. Uh, I, I, th- I think he's far more interested in a plate than a grand annual. That's yeah. what I would say. I would go along with that. And he's and he's twice the price as well. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, he's seven to one for the grand annual. I think he's something like kind of twelve fourteens for the the plate, which I think is quite big actually. There's a few Willie Mullins horses in before him. I would fancy him before I fancy any of them, like Hot on Kalur and things like that. So, uh, moving on to beginners chase. Hunter's Yarm beat past the Ruby 10 lengths. Callum, is this Willie Mullins' number one Arkle horse? <laughs> it's the same question. I'm going to blood destiny thinking, well, is it? Yeah, um, there's five or six that you could maybe throw in the ring. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty good. I think he's got a lot of talent. Um, he, he, like El Fabio, he's got the ability to absolutely clout one. That's why he came down the day before. Um, he made quite another big mistake that day and got away with it. Um, he didn't handle the county hurdle last year when he was the one that was no. kind of held back from grade one company and, and marked out like that. I mean, I mean, everyone kind of thought he was state man marked two. He, he didn't quite do himself justice. 
I don't think that kind of freshness is completely out of his system yet, and I think it'll be too inexperienced for an article. I think that'll catch him out. Mm. Uh, bumper horse we saw, finally saw the appearance of Romeo Coolio, uh, won by one and a half length. It was probably more work, workman light than you, you thought, given the reputation. He's about eight to one for the champion bumper. This horse is a lot of chat about him, Callum. Do you think he was, he's maybe better than what he showed, or are we kind of, is the height too much here? I think he's probably a lot better because Gorney like, said afterwards that you know he missed quite a lot of work and he was probably eighty percent fit for this. Uh, he had a setback his yard and his, his, his big guns in that yard the weekend weren't firing. Um, maybe maybe it's a performance worth upgrading. He travelled into it well enough. Maybe didn't find as much inspected, but watching quite a lot of his high profile horses L in the card, he went surprised and the market wasn't surprised because he went out, you know, he was quite a notable drifter. Um, he's not nailed. He's not. I mean, the dream's alive. Obviously, it's it's his racing club. So I mean, they're definitely going to go there and have a go. Um, you would prefer Jalen to there because he's achieved more on the figures and probably form wise. Uh, he looks more professional. Um, and, and he's and he's absolutely nailed down to go, which would be rare for Gigginstown. So I would rather back him at sixes than. Than Romeo Coolio eights at this stage, but it's 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 too early to gauge. There's a lot more, yeah, uh, that, that needs unearthed in that division. Yeah, I think this weekend could be quite informative. Uh, uh, thorough, thoroughs if we get racing on. In terms of the bumpers, I think we'll see a couple of good ones. Uh, we'll move into punches down on Sunday. Couple to mention: uh, Spillane's Tower beat Blood Destiny. Obviously, a horse for the Manions. They've already said that they don't think he'll go to Cheltenham, but you can't help but be taken by that, especially beating Blood Destiny. Yeah, he, he won't go long term plans, keep him at home. Um and I think they're quite excited for an open season with him. Um no wonder, I mean he's he, he's he's improving at a, a rapid rate of knots. Knots there was there was no there was no fluke about it. Um, you know, Blood Destiny breezed into it and you know, it didn't seem to stay and he, he jumps really well and but the, the, the potential isn't quite there and for a for a for a horse that was chancing to triumph, you would you would like to think he would stay a little bit better than this, but um Maybe again, we saw it in the triumph for a little bit. Maybe he's too fresh and too buzzy for his own good to give him any chance of getting home. And Willie Mullins has a lot of these novices now that he's got. He, he's got to somehow find a way to kind of harness the ability to, to maybe get to, to get to get the true potential out of them. Um, there's just so many of them that it'll be ha- quite hard to decipher how, how he's how he's you know going to try and do it with, with so many different horses. So um, he's another one that. Yeah, he's blocked his copy a bit badly, but coming back down the trip the two mile it might might suit him. Um again, he's another one that, that might he, he, he might improve to what to what you think he might be. He might not. It's 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 very difficult to gauge. Yeah, we'll move into the Moscow Flyer. We have a new Supreme Novices Huddle favourite in the form of Mystical Power. Won this by seven length. Callum, before I say anything here, I want to hear. I've not asked you about this horse over the weekend. What did you think of Mystical Power's performance and is he the right supreme favourite? Probably the best snooker table jumping that you'll ever see in your <laughs> in your life. I mean the way the way the way he was jumping was you know four legs up, four legs down, very ornery and then you know he just whooshes away as if he's pinged every every huddle. And again it's it, it's just this kind of like you know, puzzling narrative of of of, of novice we've seen um this, this guy could be an absolute superstar that can't jump or has you know beaten a deplorable field that's you know ran dreadfully and he's you know been able to get away with so many mistakes because he's he's, he's that superior to them um the most interesting aspect to me is it was meant to be running the laws and they didn't went here Suspect by default because it's for me didn't make it. Um, he's been out very early in the campaign, which suggests that he might not be a winter horse. But then that was contradicted by Patrick Mullins, who came out and said that it's a winter horse. It's just the, it's um, these kind of tables. I'd say you're just trying to try to, you can't follow what's been said. You can't follow. I, I mean, I'm quite impressed if their own yard can kind of follow what, what, what all <laughs> these kind of different strands are going sometimes, you know, left, right, and center. So You'd have to be impressed. You'd have to say he's he's another one of enormous potential near the top of this supreme market where you're kind of going, 
I can see him really progressing. You know, like Jer Jericho Drepping, I can see him really, really progressing. Um, you know, but it's, it's a substance quite there to, to justify its favourite. So it might be a little bit like, you know, like the Shishkin year and the John Bond year, mm -hmm. where it was absolutely open season, full of potential, 11 to 2, 6 to 1 in the field. We, we, we could get that this year um, because if you can't establish, if you can't really begin to get anywhere near establishing Mullins pecking orders for Supremes and Ballymores, then all of a sudden it opens the whole the whole thing up because they could run in either race. Um, other stables have a greater chance. Um, you know, Nicky Henderson has has horses that are competitive this year uh, in, in, in both. Harry Fry is a sleeper. Gordon Elliott has three or four chances. Henry de Bromhead has one or two that are going under the radar. So the other yards in Ireland. Um, it's 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 becoming a massively interesting market now, As... um, because we don't have that kind of really outstanding performance that you go, yeah, that is the one to beat. Um, mm -hmm. He could be the one, um, but he's, his jumping for me would have to improve in a supreme um you can be clumsy and whack them and hang on and, and, and be absolutely fine. But you know, if if he improves his jumping, then 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 yeah, he, he probably is he probably is the one to beat because you know from the last of the line, it was it, it was wildly impressive. There is definitely definitely some engine there. And he's, he's 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 very well bred. You know, maybe like Gally, maybe maybe the ground kind of because he'd been out in the summer, maybe the ground held him back a little bit. David, David Casey did hint that they were a bit kind of concerned about about the ground for him. Um, if he's won in spite of hating that ground, he's he's massively dangerous. Yeah, I think I, I, I do kind of come around to it now. I thought immediately after the race, I said, this is a ludicrous price because I I think if they thought of him as a supreme horse, we would have seen him a lot more often. As you say, there was a bit kind of to and fro what they were doing with him. But he has done it well. He's beaten, you can argue the field isn't good at all, but the way he kind of went on after jumping quite poorly, I thought was impressive. Would be for me at this point in terms of the price, and I think we're we're yet to see. I think there's informative events. I, th I think obviously we'll see a, a few races in the next few weeks to kind of give us more of an idea. But right now it wouldn't be for me. But you can't help but be impressed with what he done. Uh, two races on Monday that we'll touch on. We'll start with High Wind for Willie Mullins, obviously in the Gallop and the Shop Colours, getting close about sixteen to one for the Triumph Hurdle. Looked fine, a bit keen, but again, could be one maybe for for next for the next couple of seasons. Looked okay. Yeah, sixteen's triumph. Um, he'd take his chance. He looked pretty professional. I, I would think. You know, I think he jumped better than what quite a few have seen um, beforehand. Uh, yeah, he looked good. I th there's a couple maybe in that race in behind that you maybe think about for Boodles. Um, the, the the Joseph O'Brien one that everyone seems to be. Yeah. Latching on to uh, Lark in the morning, um, that that seems to be really popular. Um, personally, I just think it's a bit too soon for horses to gamble like that on, you know, too short. I mean, just getting 12, 14 to one for the sake of it to see it go in eights, you know, might, might not be the plan. I mean, yeah, it's it's not for me this early. I, I, I think handicap wise, I think yeah, I, I would I would be I would be I would be just kind of drawing up lists and and then and then striking that I think it's I think too many people are jumping in for price sake. Yeah, absolutely. Final horse we'll talk about in the recap was uh a na uh, a name that might become familiar, Maureen, obviously relation to Fahin won by eleven lines in the bumper. She looks a real talented prospect. Again, might be one they just hold back and, and protect for the long term, but really taking performance. Yeah, the mares like that, they tend to go for that um Big popular racing entry, don't they? Um, so we yeah, have connections are are really excited. Uh, showed more on the track than, than at home, apparently. Um, breezed into it, found well, put them to bed quickly. That's that's why I like to see in bumper horses. Um, you know, kind of travelling it smoothly, stamping their class, and then running all the way to the line without really being fully extended on debut. Um, lovely performance. More to come in one. One horse that should be, you know, hopefully very, very exciting. And, you know, if he gets anywhere near what Fogheen did, he'd be very happy. He'd be very good. Uh, let's move on to what we think might be coming up this weekend. 
Callum, as we said at the start of the show, we're going on the assumption that racing is going to be on. I think we're going to look very, very silly when we preview races that won't actually happen. But we'll start on Friday at Market Raising. We are getting a few races in ITV if Market Raising's on. And the first one we'll talk about, Veterans Handicap Chase, some old-timers in there. Two that have been mentioned already in the show, which is, is quite surprising. Shan Blue, 15-8. to 8, Miller's Bank, 3-1. to 1, C Page 4-1. to 1. Talk about Cliff Horses as a couple in here for me. Yeah, and that's what veterans chases are all about, isn't it? I mean, you see these horses over the years that have, you know, made you look after or 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 made you look, you know, very smart. Um, I, I do quite like. I mean, on on form, you know, Mills Bank you know, probably showed enough last time mm -hmm. that, that he might be able to win this, but I can see why Shan Blue's favourite because you know he had a decent third, you know, probably probably is the most offer still if he remained an open company and. The yard are, are are firing really really well, so um, it's it's probably probably between these these two Cipaz looks that he maybe pulled up last time, didn't he? The Venetia Williams yard form is very consistently high, but is taking a little bit of a dip at the moment. Um, yeah, it's the market's probably right between the two and fifteen to eight, three to one, just about right. Yeah, there's no, I, I do think it's between the top two. I think obviously. Shan Blue is five pounds in hand, so if he runs in the scale yard in terrific form, so I think Shan Blue, if he's if he's anywhere near, kind of what he can do, then he should probably win this. We'll move into the three o'clock. Uh, Mayors Alan Swinbank Mayors Standard Flat Race. We've got Park Princess two to one. Uh, Advocate five to two for Alan King. You've got the likes of Listen to Your Heart for Dan Skelton. A really nice horse. I like Northern Air for Fergal O'Brien at nine to one. I think Northern Air. Would probably be my nap of the weekend, actually. Actually, just hearing yeah, like, reports about him, a good point to point winner, 60, one up point to point 60. Fergal O'Brien seems to be really bullish on him. I think if he's the market's informative, I think nine to one's now big. Yeah, I like the favourite. Um, I mean, I, I think Bart Princess is a really good horse. I mean, Anthony Horrible's yard, improving form. Mm -hmm. She was very, very good at Newbury, I thought. And, and coming here with all the allowances is usually quite a significant. Uh, move. Um, he does have the odd kind of really talented flat bumper mare. This could be another. He beat Northern Symf Symphony, which I mean, it's, it's a bit OP form by 10 lengths, but I mean, it, she did everything right. It was as if she was like, you, know, you, you wouldn't think she was a four year old mare, mare made her debut. It was, it was, it was that professional. The, the, the figures were very good. That's why she's up there in the market and I, I, I can see why. I, there's a lot untapped potential there and behind as you know, Fergal's prob probably leading that kind of um, right. But there's, there's Henderson represented and Skelton represented, so it, w it won't be it won't be a penalty kick, and, and the mm. form can be questioned, you know, in behind. But I mean, she did it really, really stylishly. I can see why she's favourite, and yeah, I think I think she's pretty hard to pose. Uh, we'll move into Ask It on Saturday now. Obviously, these two races could potentially not be take going going ahead, as we say. But I really, if this goes ahead, I think this could be a really informative mayor's hurdle. Probably the best mayors in Britain turning up here. You've got, you wear it well in there, Marie's Rock, uh, West Balboa, Theatre Glory. Only, I'm right in saying, Marie's Rock obviously 150, but you've got West Balboa 143, Theatre Glory 141. Uh, you wear it well, 140. Tweed skirt even in there at 136. This is quite an informative race, and I would be laying Marie's Rock. Like, if Marie's Rock's anywhere near a label price, I'd be all over taking her on. Yeah, I mean, she, she, you could argue she had a class age, and you know, maybe a rejuvenated Bob Ollinger is, is beating her on his back, kind of at a more suitable grade over a more suitable trip. Um, you could have been coming back quickly from a collarbone injury, is, is, is you know, quite impressive in itself. Um, Tweed Scott is a quite an interesting entry, I would say. I mean, if Henders is going to run three, which I would think would be unlikely with Theatre Glory still there, um, given that she was chasing and doing quite well mm -hmm. uh, winning last time and then you know, coming back hurling here. It wouldn't be a leap of faith for Marie's Rock, wouldn't it, in that regard? So you get West Balboa as a default, default favourite who bombed out, and uh, to be honest, uh, last day. Um, I think he could take a swing here at Colicott of Anthony Honeyballs again because of the form and you know she she can get this trip. She's a course and distance winner. Um, 
frosty drying ground, even though it's probably going to be too frosty for it to go ahead. But yeah, would yeah. would would be fine for her. Uh, yeah, she's got a bit to find the weights, but a lot above her have to, have, 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 a, have a bit more to prove than than she does. Didn't quite work out for her last day. I think that was quite forgivable because she didn't quite get her own way tactically in, in front. Um, it didn't quite set up for her. Um, I think this will be a lot more straightforward. And, and I think, you know, we all of these to maybe prove with maybe bigger targets in mind. I mean, she can maybe pounce on them at sevens. Uh, we'll move into, obviously, the, the Clarence house. Now, I'm hoping and praying we get this because El Fabiola, there was a bit of a draft in the exchanges. It's now been confirmed he is going to go after the racing's on. Right, El Fabiola, let's just assume this race is going ahead and... There's no doubt about the weather and everything's going to be fine. How does John Bond beat El Fabiolo? By not sitting behind them, by going forward and making it a test of jumping. Yeah. Simple That's, as that. Yeah. Ping, 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 force a mistake and end the race there and, and, and win that way. That's how, you, that's how you try and beat him. Do you think you um, can? Do you think you could? I think he's got more chance of it doing it here than at Cheltenham yeah. because flat track. I think you know you're getting more in a rhythm and he might be able to go half a yard quicker cruising speed and and attack them and 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 maybe force a mistake. And it's it's more likely, in my opinion, that John won't be more forward for this than El Fabio. Um, as well, we kind of saw it last season when I mean where yeah it was rescheduled, but the excuses were lined up left, right, and centre, wasn't he? That he wasn't quite fully at it. We've seen quite a lot of high profile. Um, Willie Mullins' horse has been, you know, they have won as well, but they, they, they have been turned over here, kind of quite surprisingly, and then improved for Cheltenham. So it is kind of a default trial, anyway, even though it might be moved to Cheltenham trial state. Um, I do need to put in the boring weather provoso here and, and, and say that this will be off and they're calling a four o'clock inspection. And Everyone's saying, why is it that early? It's because, and Chris Stickles, the clerk of the course, was out about this morning going, this is, it's very unlikely, it's very unlikely. El Fabiola is due to travel today, uh, Thursday, Thursday afternoon, night. They're calling this early because they want him to run in the rearranged race next week at trial state. And they will do that, but only do that if they make one trip across the Irish Sea. They're not going back and back and back. So that's why the decision has to be made today because that will give connections a chance to keep him at home and then travel next Thursday only once instead of going over Thursday and then back again. So and 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 it gives it a justification for this race to be rescheduled because I think there's about three or four different ones here that you'd rather see than you know John Bourne lapping around one to eight beating two or three horses and on on trials day and when you there's probably that mayor's races. Is 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 better rescheduling that than, than this if if El Fabiola isn't there. So it's it's an early inspection because of because of that. And it's we've seen it last year as well, obviously. Like, uh, which which well, means it's going to be off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is. Uh, we know it's going to be off, but we we saw it last year. Enigam and, and Edward Stone were going to meet obviously in the Clarence House at Ascot. It got rescheduled, and they went to Cheltenham. But a horse that was the enter that uh, Ascot went won it and entered the Jeep. So it could open up interesting things, but. I would say if if it goes if it was to go ahead if it was at if it was at Kemp, uh, ask it sorry, I would fancy John Bond probably more than I would fancy John Bond anywhere else. So I, I think it would be very very interesting if if we did see them at ask it against each other. Uh, Haydock will go into the the Rossington only seven declarations, not a lot of depth to this. I sort of think south of the border would probably be the one to beat here. Yeah, he, he did have a kind of mishap, didn't he? The last yeah. day, um, and he looks like more of a steer. Uh, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't really, he wouldn't really be for me here. I, I'd be looking, I'd be looking to oppose the Henderson. Maybe lump some might, might be the one for Sam Thomas and Twist and Davis team. Um, the Ben Pollen horse coming up north is a bit of an unusual move, I would say. Um, I would, I would, I would look at lump some probably just as an edge. But again, this. This 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 meeting looks curtains, doesn't it? As yeah. well, yeah, um, Friday it. Friday eight am for that uh, inevitable field of inspection. At least we might this might be out and Haydock might still be on, so I'm gonna keep up hope. Peter Marsh, Royal Pagai could be going for it again. Master Coffee's in there again. 
this could be the one he wins. Uh, if this was to go ahead, Royal Pagano won six six. Obviously, Grade One winner has a lot of weight to give away here. If you've not nearly two stone to a lot of horses, again, if he do if he won this off one six six off twelve stone, you'd have to say that's again unbelievable. Yeah, he's done it before. I mean, this he does yield itself to track specialists, and you know, this is a bet for chase winner. He's he's won the. He, he, he won that race off a high mark that warranted him going to Gold Cup status, you know, a, a couple of years back. So, um, so yeah, the, the, the doubt for me is not not his ability to overcome that. Uh, is is how significant was his setback to Mr. King George to be ready for this? Um, you know, three weeks later, um, off a really big grinding weight. Um, his character would suggest he's good enough to do it, but there, there are interesting horses at Famous Bridges improving all the time. You see why he's default setting favourite blackjack magic and the honeyball yard, kill by Kings here as well for that yard. They, they they seem to me mapping out you know a really big weekend, which is a shame given the way it's it's all weather wise because they are beginning to hit form and I think for for yards like that, this is kind of the real time to kind of maybe get a number over or some more esteemed horses that are maybe prepping a bit more for spring. Um, so so yeah, I, I would. I would take a flyer, maybe Mr. Coffee's an each way price where he can place second or third. Um as he does. So yeah, I mean, maybe maybe famous bridge. Um but yeah, it's 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 one of those kind of neatly races where now when it's a handicap like that, you can either back the favourite that's get a class edge or not, or you can kind of look at other horses and say they're talented enough to actually beat him there rather than if, if it was just agreed to, it'd be, it'd be pretty mundane stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move into Sunday. I'm confident we might get this this going ahead. We've got the the lightning novices chase. A uh, couple of interesting runners in here. Pembroke could be going. Uh, JPR one obviously could be interesting. What do we think here? If this goes ahead, who do you fancy this in this race? Yeah, this was rescheduled from the Friday. Um, I think Pembroke's probably a bit underrated mm -hmm. because of the walkovers that he's had recently. Um, and things like that. There's a bit of depth to this in GPR1. Batata, this, this is arguably the best British race there. I'd be against Master Chewy. Um, the yellow's interesting, it's just with her forms beginning to kind of taper off taper off a little bit. Um, I would probably side with Pembroke slightly, but you could make a case that this is probably the best the best novice chase that, that, that we might have had in, in, in Britain so far, in terms of competitiveness anyway, because yeah. they'll all look kind of well tightly knit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this race if it goes ahead. We've got the flood release as well, and we are expecting to see the return of Lohom Press, who returns, obviously, a uh, former Brown Advisory winner, hasn't been seen in, I think, something like uh, just over a year, actually, so obviously since that run at Newcastle. Odds on here, if he's back, one wins us. You have to think so. I mean, on, on the form book again, I mean, protective that showed signs of life um, against him. He, he just needs to settle to kind of give himself a bit more of a chance. But two mile six around Linfield, where you know maybe being in a relatively handy position, that that can pay to your strengths. Fugitive that's representing the up and coming kind of handicap grades, and this is where kind of Linfield went a millions. It's a prize worth it, and there's good funding in this. Uh, Limerick lease is possibly coming over. Uh, it's, a, it's a good pot to kind of go for. So, uh, this shows that this kind of weekend's going to work when you've got the prize money, uh, you know, spot on. Um, if back to for Venetia Williams, you know, can map one out fresh very well, um, the market the market will tell you if, if, if he's right or not. And, if he is, you can. That's probably gives you the green light. The green light to go in. Um, I wouldn't dismiss protector. I think he's definitely the main danger, and I'm very interested to see how fugitive and Limerick lease potentially run in this company. Um, I think it'll be a very good race going forward. Uh, we'll move into Thurles. We've got the horse and jockey race there. Alaho obviously in there. You get Envoy Allen, Phil Daw. This could be quite an informative race. What do you think here? Be hoping Phil Door, that young up and comer, could maybe do something here. Um, again, the Elliot Yard, you're a little bit concerned. Um, Monk, Monkfish and Statler are entered again, and <laughs> whether they're going to go, who knows? Um, I, I, I think Phil Door might 
might be the one here. It's just a big fact fine mission for Al Hall because the King George, he, he couldn't dominate that when you kind of expect him to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know Frodon wants to lead and things like that, but um, I, I kind of expected him to kind of maybe burn them off a little bit. And, and it's whether it's whether they're kind of maybe teaching him to kind of settle down a little bit and quicken rather than kind of maybe at the age of 10 and coming over that that big injury, they don't want to kind of go out in front, zoom, zoom, zoom all the time. So, and, and Boy Allen coming here, you know, adds a kind of bit of extra spice to this because, you know, he's bang there and, and all of a sudden, you know, putting in solid efforts left, right and centre. Um, I, I, it's it's a very difficult race to work out in, in you you want to see the prices before before getting involved, but, but I, mean, I think you'd have to be inclined to take on Alaho after after the King George a, a, a little bit with maybe maybe Envoy Allen or Phil Dor. You'd be interested to see where Phil Dor's priced because he's got a lot of to find the figures, but he seems to have the most potential. And, and you know, people that are flicking about in Ryanair markets for him, he's got to kind of he's got to kind of go mightily close to, to justify it. Yeah, uh, as as interesting as this weekend has been, we've just been told that market raising on Friday is off. So there, there, there you go. Which is a bit of a shame because those those were two kind of decent little races, but it's 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 the nature of it, um, and you know it's, it's massive frost everywhere. And, yeah, you know that's kind of that's the kind of what, what you're up against a little bit. The problem is that you know British racing's calendar is so bloated that they can't rearrange mm -hmm. you know a whole month that's backed up being off. And the only solution is like maybe you know putting all weather stuff on that you know not a lot of people are are bothered about only for betting purposes you know right because they can only kind of move you know big feature handicaps or big grade ones or big grade twos they can, they can't you know move meetings about because they, they seem they seem unable to do it and you know this is frost been hanging out for a while Sunday is a massive drying day and you know. With the new Premier Racing plan, it's, it's not very Premier if we can't be bothered rearranging it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's obviously... Even if it's the midweek or something yeah. like that. Okay, it's not an ITV, but, you know, it's, it's so what? I mean, Ireland do it all the time. Mm -hmm. The laws are nice. The whole meeting is rescheduled. Four, and four or five days later, all right, it's tighter and it's a bit smaller and there's more scope to do it. But everything's been called off left, right and centre. The BHA should have less of... I mean, air, air, for instance, if it's like three on, three off or something like that this season, there's no inclination that they're going to get any of that back. No. None whatsoever. Not but it's okay. Let's give Chelmsford another meeting or Wolverhampton another meeting and put it on, or Lingfield, you know, and, and put it on at 11 in the morning or Sunday night or Saturday morning and we'll just move that Saturday afternoon. You know, there's, there's other sports on. You know, if jump racing fans, they're not going to watch Class Sixes around Lingfield because it's just on the TV. No. Watch something else. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah. I know. It's not I'm... a premier meeting for the reason. So why are you putting the money there, promoting it? It's premier because it's on. No. Re-establish your funds and try and get it on elsewhere, even if it's a Wednesday afternoon and it's for half the money. Get get it on yeah. rather than oh just stick Chelmsford on again for another th Saturday or Wednesday. I mean, I mean it's, I, 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 it, it absolutely baffles me. It yeah. really does. It baffles us all, Callum. So we'll move on to the final section of our show, our anti-post selections. So we'll move on to our anti-post section of the show, Callum. Uh, probably some good, some bad, I would say. Just like everything at the moment, it's kind of up and down. I've got Dino Blue, you've obviously got Banbridge and Tia Hooper, some good picks. Some would rather forget about. But one I want to touch on with you that's been announced is back to way ahead of schedule but might not be going for the race we want as a Rocco yeah a uh, horse I like I do have you know cover the race that he might go for the tunnels and he's in the Arkell um, I mean it's, it's it's a ray of hope isn't it I mean he, if he's going to go he's going to go straight there uh, I'm, I'm just glad the horse is back training because I really do rate him um, but to go in a deep you know up tunnels against you know, you know Maybe a bona fide superstar and Gaelic warrior in, in, in a race that's got maybe a bit of depth to, without a run and uh, come back a setback. You know, it, it, it can't be ideal, but I mean, the only an obvious once and they're going to go for it. So, I mean, I, I would rather have a, have a run for your money than not. But I mean, in terms of, I'm not, I'm definitely not raising my spirits over that one too much. Uh, right. Have you got any picks for last week? I was tempted, but with everything being off, 
by the looks of it, um, I think it gets you more time to kind of look at the handicap markets a little bit more and, and maybe and maybe actually kind of come down and, and maybe develop a novice sudden pecking order before Dublin Racing Festival and, and things like that. So I thought about it massively, but I'm going to hold fire. So nothing for me this week. Yeah, quite right. I've got one, so I'm going to just play one here because he has entered this week in a race on Sunday at Furless over two miles, seven furlongs. It's in the Albert Ballot column. It's a horse for Willie Mullins. I like the profile of high class hero, 12 to 1. I've got him at here. Really impressed with him last time out. He's done it on heavy ground. The one thing that impresses me, and I know Van Albert Bartlett is maybe different to what it was in years gone by, where you just want a horse that's that's had 25 runs over hurdles. That mm-hmm. horse has had four really good runs over hurdles so far this season and looks to be. I mean, his name obviously a high class hero, but he does look to have some sort of class. Reminds me a bit of the nice guy. He does in terms of the way he just kind of picks up. He's ran over the trip. This race that he's going for on Sunday, if he enters, is the race that Monkfish won in 2020. So, again, all the signs point that this could be a, a really good uh, Albert Ballot project for Willie Mullins. Willie Mullins has won it twice in the past four years and they've been with high class prospects. Obviously, you've had Monkfish and the nice guy. I think he's a, the profile of those. I think with the likes, he's got a lot in here. That, like reading Tommy Rong's obviously front of the market, but a lot of them are real kind of dour stairs already. And I think high class hero could just be a bit classier, and he's got the experience. So I really like this horse. Yeah, no, I get it. And he's probably likely to win, and he's likely to shorten us, and he's likely to be clear favourite after that. And I think maybe a lot of people will like Mark. Maybe you might like Lecky Watson a little bit mm-hmm. for the Bartlett. Um, out of the laws and ace, he wouldn't be top of my list for sure. I think he might be a bit of a kind of dodge pot kind of slightly a little bit. I think he'll flatter to deceive. Um, and yeah, I think you've liked him for quite some time. It's, when these horses kind of come out early in the doors, you kind of think, how, how, how's that going to kind of, how's that going to kind of compare towards the end? Um, usually not very well, but. This this season, you mean last season, Marine National didn't supreme it. It's not really a negative to get out early, and particularly now when everything's been called off left, right, and centre in early January, early to mid January. So, um, there's absolutely no harm in kind of maybe knowing what you've got early doors. Mystical Powers was kind of is kind of been the same now. Um, you can come out and hold their form and look actually better than you think you are. Um, high class hero could be one, yeah. He would, I think he must be in the top of everyone's Albert Bartlett list. It's a long, lengthy one's potential in behind, but they're not quite staking a claim and, and you expect he would he would probably stake a better claim. Yeah, he could be could be seven or eight to one quite quickly um off the back of the weekend. So I think it's a sound it's a sound selection timing wise. Yeah, I just think with the the, the race on Sunday and the fact that he's he's had the runs I, I think it maybe goes under understated. Having runs kind of towards like before the lights of October and November is not necessarily a bad thing for races like this when you're looking for a a step further to any experience is valuable and over hurdles and every race he's just seemed to progress and progress and you're thinking that this is what you want for an Albert Barlett Albert Barlett horses in the past few years we've went down the route now it's it's class angles like I think a lot I, I don't think maybe 10 15 years ago we'd be looking at an Albert Barlett horse and saying they could go on and win a gold cup but several have, have threatened to I mean Bob's worth Lord Windermere's done it there's a lot now Lando. Manila Indo, so there's there's horses that have went on and they're now that you want a lot you want class now. You don't really just have to rely on or oh, battle hardened horses that's had so much experience. You're looking for class angles now in that race. Yeah, yeah. I mean these are like maybe like Cobra and Storm and things like that might 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 have gone, but it grounds as well depends on the nutritional race that and I think this is kind of where modern day racing is kind of a, it, you need classy horses now because there's so much focus and relentless end to end gallops that you know if they do finish legless and something stays on, you know it's 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 kind of frowned upon now mm-hmm. um, in a way. Um, and you know three miles off ground and the old whack whack whack, it it, it it doesn't quite it doesn't quite appeal to the to the senses as it, as it, as it, as it once was. So um, yeah, I think ground plays a bit massive part in in, in pace last year's, you know. Um, yeah, I dare still still won it and fended them off from the front, but it was it was it was really a rather sensible clip. I think I think quite a few of them recently, recently have. I think he still needs to stay. There's absolutely absolutely no doubt about it. But um, 
Yeah, it is kind of catering a little bit for classic horses and maybe these kind of two mile six races that they have quite often in Ireland mm -hmm. um, kind of cater for that where it kind of, it, it, you do have kind of Ballymore types and our Ballymore types and there's not this massive discrepancy between pace horses and stamina horses like there once was before. People t talk it all about time Ballymore and in Supreme as if like different types of you, you need a ton of foot in the in the Ballymore and you actually need a bit of stamina in the Supreme. It, it depends what kind of pace you go in and how tactically things develop on the day, in, in my opinion. But yeah, that, that seems to be the, the, the current trend of, of, of the Albert Parlet and, and Nova Sibler. Yeah, so that that is my pick for this week. Uh, we'll be back next week with a new episode. We probably won't have many horses to talk about as it's clearly looking bleak for the weekend, Callum. But thank you very much again. Enjoy, enjoy your punting, whatever you can, and we'll, we'll see you next week. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah, hopefully we do see some racing, but um, I think it gives further opportunity, actually, you know, divulge into the old form. It's 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 quite muddling. There's all kind of markets in the air. Uh, prices are a little bit short. And I think I think giving yourself maybe a little bit extra time to kind of step back and, and dig deeper in certain horses will get will give you a better chance. And if you're taking tens instead of twelves about one, then I, th I think you can afford to because the prices are aren't, aren't that aren't that great. So uh, it's a slim boot, but um, and maybe slim pickings over the weekend. But I, th I think it allows you for maybe a bit more form study and maybe a bit more concrete opinion and on quite a lot of races that are. That are up in the air. If there is no racing to at least you get a at least you get a rant from me this week. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, for more content, subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you.